I, I have come across so many young children, young girls reporting to me, a very close family friend's daughter, a very high official's daughter she was. And she uh, called me one day at the age of 20 and she cried to me on the phone. I've known her since she was born. And she said, Auntie, I'm very upset. I said, what's upsetting you? Then she told me that she was abused by all the staff that were her, her father's office from the age of five before she could realize she was abused. The abuse went on and it passed on to the relatives. It, she became a wreck by the age of 20. She's a very intelligent girl, very well educated, everything. But there was this, uh, this uh, pain in her. This, and she was very upset. I had to take her for counseling. And uh, counseling helped her, of course. But what I'm trying to say is that it can happen, this abuse does not happen somewhere in the wild or where the child is somewhere else. It happens in your own home. So if you have a child, girl child, protect it. If you later on, all of you to be fathers and mothers, please don't leave your child with anybody other than yourselves. So the abuse factor is very serious, has to be taken into account because they can be wrecked psychologically for the rest of their lives. So the girl child abuse, and if we all don't stop it, who will stop it? So let's each of us take this to protect this girl child, this innocent girl child from abuse. So then, then she grows up. She becomes a young girl, lovely woman. And there, there on, she goes on the road. She, she has to, she cannot stay at home like the earlier days. She has to move on. She has to go to college, school. She has to go shopping. She has to go everywhere. And there is this horror of Eve teasing. I'm not, I'm not being very uh, strict or very rude to the men. Forgive me, don't get me wrong. It's what goes beyond a friendly chat or a friendly tease. Eve teasing, to the extent you know of the girl who went, who was killed when she was Eve teased in, in Chennai. So the Eve teasing to the extent of damaging, ruining and wrecking them, that is to be forbidden. And that has to come from young men. You all should take a vow not to do Eve teasing. Imagine your sister being Eve teased. Every time somebody is doing it, try to prevent it. Try to prevent it. Counsel your friends who are doing it, please. And to the girls, I have another message. Become bolder. Stand up against any injustice. Stand up against any Eve teasing. And then you will know they are cowards. So be, develop the boldness in you, develop the courage to ask questions, to stand and fight, and you will find you're a widow. And looking at, the, I'm sure all of you heard about the daughter of India and how the statements there are simply incorrigible. It cannot be taken, leave alone by women, by men even. So let's go against anything that is violent against women, especially the rape, which is becoming so common. And what is reported in the newspapers is probably one-tenth of what is happening. So let's stand up against this rape, stand firmly, and let's ask for punishment of the people who commit this very in unthinkable crime. So we all should ask, we should, should sign, we should send memorandums saying that this, these people who resort, these humans, have to be punished, even with a death, death sentence. Forgive me if I am harsh. And, well, there is no teasing, there is no rape. The woman gets married, she happily enters into the, her, what is called her, her home. And there is the few months of happy, blissful married life and then begins the violence against women. She's beaten for whatever reason, for dowry, for, not, for no reason at all sometimes. And a drunken husband is the worst. He can really make her life hell. So she bears many thousands of women bear this domestic violence very silently. Why do they bear it? Once, upon, once a patient came to me, she was in for time, and she was undergoing treatment. On one of the treatment cycles, she came with red, red eyes, all bleeding under the conjunctiva. 
So I asked her, what happened to you? Why did you get this on your eyes? What happened? He said, she said, my husband beat me. I said, what? Yes, every time I get my period, he beats me. I said, why do you stay with him? I took my, I stepped out from the role of a doctor and became her friend. And I asked her, why do you want to stay with him? Well, doctor, if I come away from my family, I do not have a social security. I don't have a job. I don't have money and I don't have security. My parents are not willing to take me back. So I bear with this. This is a real picture that is behind the rosy scenes. So each one, everyone in this, especially an appeal to the men, please counsel your friends. If you see any domestic violence, please counsel, please ask them to come for a marriage counseling and try to set it right. So this can really mar the children. What you have to think is a child witnessing this domestic violence is going to be psychologically scarred. So we ought to prevent domestic violence. And then, so we don't want beaten Saraswatis or Shaktis here. We want them really happy and smiling. And the dowry. It's a huge, huge plague in our country. It exists even in the most educated societies, in the most affluent, and in the lowest. Only thing, the amount is different. And okay, even if she gets, she's harassed for more. And to the extent she is subjected to the flames even. So you, we hear of so many women being burnt, being harassed, being killed for dowry. Then when she goes through the pregnancy, okay, she settles down, she goes through a pregnancy. The whole family, especially the mother-in-law and the in-laws, are betting whether it's going to be a male child or a female child. Again, the discrimination starts there, and I know of many families, many women, who have gone and aborted because it was a female child. They can't even have a first female child. That, was the, that is the uh, true picture. And as a mother, she gives birth. She struggles with her whatever, especially the women in the lower strata where money is also an issue. She struggles to educate this child. She gives her life and breath for it. Look at these poor women sitting on the railway track and teaching our child to read and write. So we must all help them. We are all part of a a movement in Polachi where we are trying to help the tribal children learn their three reading, arithmetic and uh, writing. So each one of you, since you have been given the gift of education, try to impart it to a, a child who is not uh, having access to it. And then she grows old, her children have grown up, have got wonderful jobs, they are in good software companies earning five-figure, six-figure incomes, and she stays there in her village, still doing the same jobs which she did before to keep her livelihood going. And God help her if she falls sick or if there's anything, uh, no, she, she's invalid, there's nobody to help her because all the children have left the town. She lives in her small village. So this is the poor destitute woman. She becomes, nobody wants her. So this is a whole life cycle. And I've, I've shown you the flip side, as I told you in the beginning. And why did I put this with you? Why did I put this? Because you understand, at every point at what I have said, you can help. And you does not mean the women alone, the men also. I. I want you to take a vow today on this Women's Day to help the, any woman, any, ch any woman, in any part of her life, whatever you can, please help her. She needs it. You have been listening. The story I told is not a story. It is what many people's life is about. If you have been lucky, pass, pass on a bit of your luck to those unfortunate women who are more than a million. And I believe uh, after this talk, I, I feel, I perceive, Agni Kunjundra Kandain, Pundi Nilvaitin, Patri Erindadu Kadu. Adamari, Unga Mind Lel on the Tea Patri, I want you to help women. Thank you very much. If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. We have amidst us an eminent persona who is an exemplary woman, vested with power and vigor. Our guest of honor, Ms. V. Malini. 
She has graduated in electronics and communication engineering from Banaryaman Institute of Technology. She began her career by joining Honeywell Technology Solutions in 2003 as an engineering trainee at Madurai. Her tenacious efforts made her to scale greater heights. May we now request Ms. V. Malini to address the gathering. A very good evening, uh, one and all present here. I'm feeling very thankful to be here in this campus because this is where I did my graduation. And uh, thank you for that wonderful opportunity to the chairman, to the principal, to Bharti ma'am and Valarmati ma'am, because when they thought about a Women's Day celebration, a spark had come to like, okay, let's call her. <laughs> so thank you so much for that opportunity. So. Uh, I, I want this to be like a more of a open session uh, because I want to hear from you because there are some messages that I want to like take back with me when I go here. I'm not like so good at talking, so let's keep it simple. Uh, one important thing that I wanted to like tell you when I was walking through the campus is that the life till you finish your college is not the same after you move into your corporate life. Because there is always either your parents, your teachers, or somebody who always guides you, helps you, whether you like it or not, they always tell you, OK, this is right and this is wrong. The moment you enter, enter the corporate world, you are all by yourself. So there needs to be a lot of caution. And there's a lot of fun, which you're going to like enjoy being in a totally different place and a new world. So you need a little bit of caution and at the same time enjoy being there. So I, I just got some tips for you uh, because looking back like 11 years now from uh, when I graduated and I'm a manager at Honeywell. So thinking back the journey I had, I, I feel like there are five uh, important things that I learned. So the foremost thing is adapting to change. So today's world is like changing. I don't have to say why it is changing because you know it's like changing every second. So as a woman, we naturally have that ability to like adopt because uh, right from like getting married, moving to a different home and we trying to like take control there and do lot of things so we women have that ability to change things so we need to be adaptable and uh, that's that's the way we can push ourselves to move forward in this uh, corporate world uh, so whenever we think like okay I'm a bit comfortable now which means you are not growing there so some discomfort needs to be like always there, which will help you change, 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 and then like move forward. So don't get scared or worried when you come across some changes in the corporate world. Because when I entered there, it was like totally very new to me. Like 10 years back, uh, it was like totally new. When I went there, I didn't speak good English. So that was a big challenge for me. And it was a corporate mandate that we need to be talking in English. So uh, there are some etiquettes that we need to follow, and there's a certain work culture. So try to adopt yourself. So the next point that I would like to say is, as a woman, we need to like develop trust. So with your peers, with your friends, with your family, with your customers, and with your supervisors or leaders, we need to establish that trust. So once we establish that trust, people start looking at you with confidence. They come to you for uh, something they want. They rely on you. So try to build that trust with whomever you kind of interact. Because uh, you may be very talented. You may be like having a very good communication. But end of the day, if they feel that, OK, I cannot rely on this person, they won't give you an opportunity to like move forward. So uh, I initially started uh, my career as an engineer. And uh, in like three years, I became a team lead. And then in like uh, three years, I became a manager. So what I observed is uh, being truthful. If you know it, say no it. If you don't know, 
say don't know, that's fine. So being uh, very truthful to yourself, try to establish the trust with everybody that you work. So as a woman, I think we, we always like tend to be that way. So continue to do that even when you move to corporate. And the third thing is having passion for work, like whatever you do. Out of your college, you may go to a, a software field or you may go to some research or you could uh, even change your track being a, uh, uh, maybe you can become a doctor or you can like move into something else. So whatever work you do, try to do it with passion. When I say passion, uh, ask, why am I doing this? What am I going to get out of this? So try to understand that. Don't do it because somebody told you because that will not keep you moving lifelong. It may work for some time, but beyond which you like start get boring. So always establish that passion and create interest in what you do. Always ask that questions of like, why am I doing this? What is the next thing for here? Can I do this better? So question yourself. So women naturally have those kind of tendencies to like question something. So make a, a chance here and try to ask questions, develop passion. The next point is um, fight till you get it. So it's not very easy to uh, uh, establish yourself like when you go there because there's a lot of competition uh, out in the world. Uh, it's not just with respect to IT, but with any uh, career that you take, there is always a competition. So don't get scared at competition. Try to do your best, strive for the best, and keep fighting for that. Uh, when I remember an instance like uh, when I was given a project and uh, they wasn't sure if I'll be able to make it because that required a lot of uh, work in the US time zone because we need to talk to the people out there to understand some of the project details. So having a woman in that position was like a challenge. So the organization recommended to put a male out there. So I went out and asked them, why can't I do this? When he can do this, why can't I do this? So the answer they gave was, well, that requires you to be staying late in office, which is difficult for a woman in terms of like security. So it's better we put a man out there. So then I asked, why not I do this from home? I have a very good internet connection. Why can't I do this? So they, they just realized, OK, this is also an option. Let us give a shot. So that's when like, I started taking things from home. And sometimes I used to like, stay a little later in office, but I also ensured there is like, enough security for me, either uh, from the office or fi from my family to ensure I go back uh, safe to home. So these are some kind of uh, things that you may also encounter, which will prevent you from like going uh, out to that place where you can say, yeah, I can do this also. So reach out, always give it a shot, fight for it. And that's when you will know that you do have some hidden talents, which you might not have like identified so far. And the last one is uh, this, uh, this is like something that uh, I felt even after like working in uh, IT for like 11 years, learning every day. Uh, since the day we joined our LKG till now, I, I feel like there is something we are learning every day. And most of our talent gets built in the college and the schools. But once we get into our career, that's when we started learning things from life. Because that's where you start being alone. You try to handle things. You go work somewhere. You try to interact with a lot of people. You observe people. So I think that learning every day in terms of like a talent or in terms of a behavior is very important. And there is never a limit to learn. So every moment we learn something. When I came to this college, I realized like 10 years back when I was like here, uh, we still had the best infrastructure, but now I feel it's like 10 times uh, even more than what we had. So try to utilize all those opportunities and do your best. There is no limit to learning till we 
have our last breath, there is an opportunity to learn, learn, learn. So continue to learn. Yeah, and uh, I think that's pretty much I had. So if uh, you permit, probably we can have a couple of questions. I would like to answer them. Like from the students, if they have any questions. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. I am third year IT student. Uh, apart from Wednesday, I want to interact with something in your office. Uh, can I can I ask you about your project that you are currently working? Okay. So I I would love to tell that, but uh, that's like a never-ending story. So just to keep it short, so right now I'm managing uh, uh, projects in three different technologies. So one is basically uh, Java J2E, the other one is on .NET, which is on a framework called Psycho, and the other one is on uh, Salesforce. So I have a team of like uh, 20 members who are spread across these projects, and we work for one of the uh, biggest businesses uh, in automation, that's Tridium. You can Google about tridium.com. Uh, they, they have a very good product called JS, which helps you control your appliances through the internet. So for this business, we are creating a lot of solutions on these platforms. So uh, I, I just wanted to add something here. We do have a diversity connect in the uh, office back. I, I think pretty sure all other companies do have it. So where we talk about women empowerment. So what I realized was, uh, though we, women are like, they have good leadership capabilities, they have the ability to drive things, sometimes it requires a little push from the management, like a sponsor. There is somebody up on the top to say, yeah, she has a good potential, let's groom her up. So there are opportunities like that if we have that potential and we need to like get hold of that and climb up the ladder. Good evening, ma'am. I'm uh, from third year CS. Uh, I'd like to ask just one question, that is, you said that after college when we move to corporate that our lives totally change and uh, security, all that matters. So um, I'd like to know that what are the problems that uh, you are undergoing or you underwent when you newly joined uh, the corporate job? Okay. Um, just I told you before, the main thing was the uh, language of communication. Uh, because when I was at college, though there was a mandate to communicate in English, we, ne we never like uh, really communicated well. So that was the challenge that we had because when we speak to our managers, our supervisors, they communicate in English. And I, I, I was like feeling bad, maybe my communication was not good. But then I st slowly like did my homework to kind of get out of it. And the other challenge was, uh, the uh, the guys they usually like sit very late and they try to like do all their projects well ahead and we can't like stay late in office so we we women were like a little slow but uh, how we overcome overcame that was we took like a work from home and that's how we used to like compete with them um, so apart from that I, I feel um, the ability to like lead people, uh, men somehow they uh, have that ability to kind of settle things down very quickly. But we are a little bit emotional when it comes to like people. So uh, controlling that emotions will also like help us to move forward. So I felt that were the challenges. So if that's it, thank you all once again for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you.